Hi guys and girls and welcome to another episode of Kook Shed, uh, a YouTube channel where we discuss things to do with surfing and bodyboarding and I'll share some tips and techniques and handy hints that I've found and picked up along the way and throw in the odd review as well. Um, so today we're talking about uh, tail pads for surfboards uh, and we're going to put one on a board. So hopefully you can join us and you might even learn a thing or two. So yeah, let's go. So we've got our new um, tail pad and we're going to put it on this new board. Um, I've chosen a brown and sort of tan um, tail pad to go with the board as it's got the wooden, wooden veneer on it. So I've tried to match the uh, tail pad to the board. You can try doing this too. Um, you know, if you've got a certain colour wetsuit or a certain colour leg rope, you might want to match um, the, the tail pad to your equipment or your fins. You might have green fins, so you might want a green pad on your whiteboard or, or whatever. I know it's not really that important, but um, you're going to look at it all the time and uh, it just just might make it. Uh, look a little better so I try and consider what uh, color I'm going to get based on on the board and um, what my equipment is going to be but also you want to consider the type of traction the patterns um, what's what works best for you and um, whether it's got a tail kick on it it's got quite quite a pronounced tail kick right at the end um, to stop your foot sliding right off the back or um, just so you can feel where without looking down you can feel where the um, the, the back of the tail pad is so um, you might want to consider that sort of thing there's there's so many different types of um, tail pads around with all different colors and shapes and sizes um, you can get ones for different uh, shaped boards like there's different tail shapes um, you can get a specific one for a fish with a big swallowtail, where the where the points will come, uh, the points of the of the pad will come right out and follow the um, overall tail shape of the board. You can get really wide ones that will um, cater for really wide tails, and all yeah that sort of thing. So definitely before you buy one, consider the board that's going to go on and um, how you want it to look. Now this is a, quite a wide tail, so I've got one that um, a tail pad that is split into three. Um, some of them are just one piece, and that that's you know that could be fine for you. Um, but I like having them with the little split. The, there's a cut there, cut there, so that I can um, spread them out uh, according to how wide my tail is um, and where I'm where I'm putting it. So. They come with a fair bit of packaging, these um, tail pads. So try and recycle, try and recycle the bit of cardboard if you can. Um, they also come with the plastic wrapping. One thing about the surf industry, there's a lot of um, packaging that comes with products, and I think that's something we can really look at and try and change. So um, even the plastic that was surrounding this, this stuff here. Um, maybe you can try recycling it. Uh, here in Australia we've got a thing called Red Cycle where you can actually recycle this sort of plastic. Um, maybe you can put that in the Red Cycle um, division of the recycling um, and just try and minimise your impact on the environment. So we pop it off. It's just fixed to the back of the, um, the cardboard packaging. It's, it's just a little bit of light. There it is. You can see the light tape it has been stuck on there. Um, most most um, tail pads will come with instructions. So we're more or less going to follow the instructions on the, uh, on the back of the card here. Now bear with me, uh, I am a little fussier than some of the other tail pad applications that I've seen. Um, but I want to make it just right, I'm going to look at it for a long time, so 
um, yeah, I'm going to really make sure it's in the right place for me, how I want it. Now before we go about applying, it pays to look where the actual, where the, the end fin is located. So there's quite a, quite a distance there from the tail as to where that, where that fin's going to be fixed. So that sort of helps you figure out where you want to um, locate your, your tail pad. Now, me personally, and for, for the, this board, I'm going to try and put it as far back as possible, um, somewhere around there, I'm going to be happy with. So, from what we saw underneath, the, the fin finishes about here. So if my foot is up against the back of this tail pad, my, my foot will be directly over the, um, the fin. So somewhere around here. And there you go. So, all right. So it's just, yeah, it pays to just check where your, where your back fin's gonna finish and um, set your center piece accordingly. Now they've got a bit of, um, They've got a, a cover here to stop it sticking to anything before it goes on. Um, so once this stuff is off, it's going to stick to anything really, really, really well. So be careful and make sure that um, you can, you're putting it where you want it to go. Now, I sort of push them down gently, sit them where I want them, might want them to go for starters. And then I, I, I make little adjustments. Some people will just slap them on, bang, they've got a tail pad on and they forget about it. And that's cool, totally cool. But um, with a board that just looks as good as this and one that I'm going to keep for many years, um, I'm really going to make sure it's in the right spot. So yeah, you just peel it back like that. You generally start with the center, the center piece, and try and center it in the middle there. Now, some boards or most boards will have a stringer in the middle, so I'm sort of um, up a creek without a paddle on this one. I've got to do it by eye um, with a stringer. It even says it on the instructions. Line, line that point up. There's a point there. Line that point up with uh, the stringer but I don't have one, so I'm going to sort of go off the centre here where they've, where they've put the plug and then try and just do a visual line between th this and the nose of the board. So I'm just going to stick it right about there. And then I sort of just make sure that's pointing. Directly at the nose. Right, so that's not pressed down per se. Uh, it's just sort of sitting there. So it is sticking, but I can remove it if I change my mind at this point. Now because this tail is so wide, I'm going to have quite a gap between the, the outer pads. Now this can be tricky to get right if you want it exactly right, the exact width and everything. If you're really fastidious like me, this can actually be um, quite time consuming to get this right. That's why the one piece can actually be good for some people. So I try and get this line to be right. To, to follow that like that line there to to be consistent and I also try and try and line this up to how to how I want it. So something like that is what I'm gonna go for. Probably don't need it that wide because the, the board drops off a bit there. I'm probably not gonna be treading there too much. Hopefully, but um, you still want it to look like it's in proportion to the board as well. Um, 
So something like that's cool. I'm just going to, this is the fussiness in me, just going to check once more that that is not too far forward. Because this is only a short board. Yeah, I could probably go a little further back. Because this is only a 5.5 five and I'm quite um, tall, I might put it further back. So you can see here, it's already sort of started sticking like that but not not really really hard but yeah enough so I'm going to bump it right back actually right back because I'm so lanky and I've got such a wide stance and I actually don't really go too far back on my tail pads I've found so putting it a little bit further back is not going to be too bad the only issue you might have here is the leash might sort of the, the, the leash securing rope might pull on it or rub on it or something like that but if you're prepared for that I'll go for it Okay, now for the really fussy among us, i.e. me, I just double check a rough idea on width, distance from the from the rail, that's ten and a half. Right, so now that's set a little further back like I want it, I'm going to start piecing these in. So you might want an even distance in there all the way down, or you might want a bit of a tapered distance. So it gets smaller here, gets smaller there and, and flares out at the end. Um, it's totally up to you and where you sort of your foot moves to or where you need grip. I sort of some people don't care, like like I said, some people don't really care as long as there's something there for their foot to grip and that's that's totally fine. But um I don't know because, yeah, like I said, because this is such a nice looking board, I really want it to look nice for a long time. So that's pretty good for me. So I'm going to try and mimic that. So I leave this one here as a guide. Really, you should peel them from the from from this part back because it's facing that way so if you do sort of pull up any corners or anything by trying to pull it off it's not going to peel up from that way when your foot's catching on it but that's sort of getting into semantics I think I did question whether to uh, make a video of this because I do take so long to do it and I'm so fussy with it but I thought I'll give it a go and you guys might be able to pick up some tips and it's sort of going back down a little bit
And sometimes there can be a, like I know there's lighting on this board, but there can be a sort of trick of the light sometimes where it looks because these chunks are so deep and thick, it can trick you into what how far they are apart and things like that. So just pay to take a bit of care and pay a bit of attention. too far back. Should have gone off this line at the top. So obviously you're going to want to do this when you've got a bit of time on your hands, not when the surf's pumping. Or you're in a hurry to get out there because you might make a mistake. Because once this stuff sticks, this is 3M grade glue, once this stuff sticks, it's on. And to take it off uh, can be quite an ordeal once it's dried. I'll show you that in another video. about these leaving gaps in the um, in the in the pad like this is water can run off water can run out those channels um, I know there's already drainage holes but it just helps seems pretty good now sometimes the actual pads themselves aren't cut straight, like 100% straight. Like I've got these pretty, they're pretty flush, like they're in a good consistent line. But down the bottom, they're sort of not exact. So just be aware of that. centimeter apart. I think down here they went to about yeah. That's about it. Um so don't know if you can see that there. So the first step, ensure tail area is clean, right? So I had a brand new board, so it's clean. Uh, I wiped it down um, so it's gonna be no problem. But if you have a board that you have just removed an old tail pad off for some reason, maybe it was falling off or ripped or whatever, or hurt it like in the way, or I don't know, um, that's a whole other ball game. Um, you, you need to really clean the board to get rid of that stuff. Uh, if it's just a, a waxy board, there's just wax and you never put a tail pad on it before, um, clean the wax off. You have to get all of it off in my opinion, get all of that wax off. It's got to be back to a uh, new finish underneath that because it won't bond properly. Um, so obviously not a wet board, make sure it's dry. Um, dry and clean, no sand underneath it, no other dried up solvents from other tail pads, that sort of thing. So they say line center of the pad with a stringer. We don't have one, so I've just sort of done it by eye, rather painfully. Um, Peel the backing off the pad. I reckon start from there when you peel the backing off. Start from that underneath the chunk in case you do damage to these edges, which is where the water will mainly be flowing towards. Um, Centre piece first, which is what we did, and then work out from there. So, now they say push, once you've got this right, how you want, they say push from the centre of the centre piece. And so we're going to do that now. So we just push on there and work our way out to the to the edges. Just 
push in the center underneath get in there and in that little groove there and push it down make sure you push down on that make sure you really get that down start in the center and work your way out just in case there's any air bubbles in the in the adhesive okay now that should set like that now you might be keen to get straight out there and into a wave on this but if you really want that to set um, it says here to leave for 12 hours so yeah I, I would leave my board for a day at least like a whole day before um, before taking it in the water that way it really allows that, that um, solvent to set and yeah, you're not going to have any trouble with water getting in and messing with the glues before it's really set so that that's what I'd do, I'd wait a whole day go out on another board if it's really good or whatever and you really need to get a wave um, just let that set now I've been a bit precious with this application um, just because it's a brand new board and yeah I'm just I, it looks good and I want it to look good that's why I bought the matching thing but um yeah, if you've just got an old board and you just want to chuck a pad on it, you can be a lot quicker and a lot less uh, careful. You might not care as much about where it is and what, you just might want to feel something under your back foot so you know where your foot is and so it's not going to slip off the back. But that's generally the process I go through and I find that taking that extra couple of minutes or more, like you saw, um, it just really helps yeah, the, the overall presentation of the board and um, you'll just be happier with it and you won't have to go back and rip it up and move it later if you've messed it up. I've seen some really dodgy tail um, pad applications and sure, if they're happy with it, great, but I'm just a little fussier, so yeah. Right, so that's it for now. Um, we have a new, nice new tail pad on our board. I'll give you a look here. So see it. There we go. So we've got a nice new matching tail pad on our uh, board. I think it looks quite nice and uh, hopefully it will serve me well and um, give me a lot of grip. Um, I was going to do a review on these, uh, on these actual tail pads by Aquatic Surf Scene. Um, stay tuned. Stay tuned for another um, YouTube episode where I might actually do a review on those because I've actually used a couple of them um, for my TimberTech boards so I've used them enough to sort of be able to give you um, a review on them so if you like the look of them yeah check out my YouTube channel maybe subscribe um, and yeah you'll see a review of that later so remember try and oh my god there's my ruler try and uh, Recycle the uh, the card cardboard and the packaging if you can. Um, read the instructions. Make sure you've got a clean board to put the um, tail pad on. Take your time with applying it. Use a ruler if you have to. If you're really fussy about how it's going to look and that, um, yeah. But as long as you take your time and follow those instructions in these ones, you should be uh, good to go, and, and your tail pad should give you a lot of grip and help in sort of locating your foot. Some people use, I know sometimes it helps me, um, it, it, the tail pad helps me feel where my foot is in relation to the back of the board sometimes. I've got some long boards that I move up and down, not actual long boards, I mean longer boards, that I move up and down, um, and the tail pad sort of helps me gauge where my foot is, so um, they're handy for that too. And they actually also protect your board, from um, depressions and possible dings and things like that so they are worth looking into if if you want to protect the back of your board which is where you do push on a lot um, your knee might hit it when you're duck diving that sort of thing I don't know with your style of duck dive but yeah it just it's worth looking into getting a towel pad for general everyday use for sure so um, remember to recycle and yeah, hopefully that's been helpful helpful to you. I know it was a drawn out episode, sorry about that, but um, I just wanted to make sure it was right. Uh, if you've got any tips um, or anything that I've missed or any questions about this tail pad application, 
or the video, just leave me a comment. If it was helpful, um, hit like. Um, yeah, and if you want to see more sort of surf based tips and techniques and things like that and reviews, uh, hit subscribe and I'll see you shortly. So that's it for now. Thanks for dropping by. See you next time.